All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, because it is getting close to the end of the day, the last session. So uh, this presentation is actually an accident. It's the lonely road of SVG. How many people here actively use SVG in their programming day to day? OK, you people are the ones that I needed a lot of help from when I was given an opportunity. So uh, my favorite character, Leatherface, just walking down the road, so misunderstood. Uh, so is an SVG. Um, about me a little bit, I'm a UI architect at Teradata. Um, I'm always hacking on things, different things outside of work and this, so I'm giving another presentation tomorrow, which is drones and JavaScript, so you can see a little bit of a disconnect here, SVG and flying stuff with JavaScript, all resulting in the same thing, chaos for anybody who has to use what I use. I am not an artist. Uh, I would say I'm a designer in the sense of I understand design principles. I am not going to be Johnny Ive. I get that but we can put together some useful and intelligent interfaces and things for people to use. Here I've got a few things that I want to clarify. It, this won't be a design session. Uh, not going to get into all the browser fallbacks because at this point in time, as of IE, IE9 and up, we've got a lot of SVG stuff handled already. It's not the world of IE8. If it is, there are plenty of libraries, Raphael JS, if you've got to use SVG, that can help you get past those things. Um, I feel for you if you have to battle the older stuff, but I know you do have to sometimes. Testing, no, there will be no unit tests in here, okay? Uh, beautiful code, this code that I've written for the sample app and everything like that is to, meant to be as simple as possible to get things done, not meant to be in an eloquent style of writing JavaScript or the coolest way in the world to use uh, CSS. So you'll see some things where you'll say, wait, I would never do that in production. I probably would, but and not suggesting you do. So what this is, it's a true story. Uh, I'm going to cover SVG basics. I'm going to show SVG animations, but I was thinking, you know, I was going to do a bunch of demos of the animation, and I was like, you know, that's kind of a waste. Uh, if there's plenty of things I can show online that are already there. Um, some might say, well, that's kind of a cop-out, but you'll, you'll understand in a minute. Uh, libraries, we'll, cut, we'll touch base on a few libraries that if I had known about when I had gotten started, I would have uh, just used those and stopped trying to do things with document, create element, SVG, namespace, all that stuff. So I had been in a situation that looked a little something like this. Uh, we had a product, they needed to build a whiteboard component, and we had to have you know all these wonderful lines drawing to nodes and things like that, which is real simple, right? You just throw something up there, and you know I heard a few wise guys say, oh, you can do that with CSS, you put boxes here and that, no, 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 please don't use CSS to draw things. Uh, stick with SVG, you'll be better off. But what happened was everybody kind of looked around and I, and I got the opportunity and it was actually one of the coolest things I've gotten to work on in the UI in a while. For me, I'm always in the JavaScript, I enjoy that and stuff, but this was a challenge because honestly, I had never used SVG before. So I figured how hard could this be, right? Go grab an O'Reilly book, read up on some tags, it's XML, what's the big deal? Somebody does something in Illustrator, oh wait, yeah, the design team made an awesome design in Photoshop, now we've got to build it. And it's dynamic. You could have three nodes or a thousand nodes. It could have counts, it might have text in there, all sorts of things. You got to pan it, you got to zoom it. I have a very basic example of that here that I'll show. But um, just to get into why I had to choose or why I decided to go with SVG and why you might want to for different things. Obviously, scalable vector graphic, it's not a raster, which means zoom in, zoom out, do all those things that you want. You don't get pixelation. This is killer for everybody who has to deal with retina displays, all right? Stop trying to make a PNG for everything in the world of every size. You could probably rock it here, do some SVG. You also get super small file sizes, too. If you're going to have inline SVG and you're not creating it on the fly with JavaScript, you can get this stuff compressed pretty tight, just like you would with any HTML things. Um, it can be, in certain instances, cacheable. Okay, so you can cache things if you have the right approach. Scaled any size, um, like I crossed out nice. No, if you're dealing with retina stuff, go ahead and just do this. Uh, interactive, you can get interactive with SVG. This isn't just images. I mean, remember the last time, I don't know, any, but raise your hand if anybody here ever used an image map. All right, yes, all right, I got some people here who can share the pain, they know. Um, with image maps, that's not interactivity. We're talking animations, filters, things like that that are going on, some serious stuff. Um, filters, I will say this, that was my nightmare right there. Um, I am looking for somebody who can maybe after this presentation come up and say, Adrian, I'm going to solve your biggest angst you've had with all this. I'm going to show you how to make a drop shadow filter dynamic and work in all browsers. 
because I've had it. It's awesome in Chrome. The nodes disappeared in Firefox, but they still show up in IE? Wait, what's going on? Then Safari doesn't show the nodes, things like that. Doing a drop shadow filter. You cannot use CSS, box shadow, all that stuff, drop shadow. It, no, no, no. You've got to use the filters and all that. I had a nightmare getting it to work, and it was so unpredictable on various platforms and various browsers that that was one of those trade-offs I had to make with the design team, which kind of sucked for me in the sense that I really thought the use of the drop shadow for the first time, the way we were going to use it, really popped and really set things off, and it kind of stunk that we had some issues. Um, and the last one, because CSS wasn't meant for drawing. Not too long ago, I was the clown who drew a school bus with the Grateful Dead sign on it, all out of CSS box div tags, okay? I did stuff like that, thought that was so cool, you know? Do logos and things and CSS div tags with HTML. Yeah, what a waste of time that was, but on to other things. Before I show you some code, because there'll be more code here than a lot of this stuff, but some SVG tools you're familiar with, Adobe Illustrator, Sketch, Inkscape, et cetera, they go on and on. When I talk about these tools, that's a situation where you're getting an initial SVG created for you. Somebody goes in, they draw it out. Adobe Illustrator is absolutely killer, and the fact that you can export to SVG and you get all these things, and you get these paths, you get this XML document you can work with. But with that, and I'll show you that in a second, you're going to want some other things. Like I said, Raphael JS, that's going to be great for you if you've got to do all the polyfills for all the old browsers. Um, SVG JS and Snap SVG JS, if you're going to do any animations uh, significant with that is beyond just moving things on the screen, but like really significant following paths, doing all this crazy stuff with your SVGs, just stop and go grab one of those libraries, okay? Um, you will you'll get wrapped around the axle trying to get it to work in all browsers. Um, it, it's, there's fallbacks, things like uh, that you would normally do, like text on a path works in one browser one way and it animates perfectly, but you go to another browser, not quite right. These uh, Snap, Snap SVG, which I'll show you some code for that, it's actually, if I had seen that a while ago, I would have totally used that when I started off on this project. Um, an SVG optimizer. So let me jump in here real quick to show you this. Uh, the SVG optimizer, it's a simple online site right here. You can go in here, you can choose a file, you can upload it. It will strip out when tools make your SVGs for you. They put a lot of metadata in there for the apps to understand it. You want all that out. You want to get rid of all that. You want to compress the white space, yank out comments, things you don't need to get that file size down. So this is a super valuable tool. There are ones you can use using Node. Any Node developers here? OK, great. You could, there's a couple tools out there. I did have a problem with one of them not being able to uh, get the things quite the way I wanted to. But then again, I wasn't doing like take an ad and make an ad interactive. We were actually taking like we're making an interactive implementation of a component. So it was a little different. But I'd recommend this. I just wanted to show that to you guys real quick. So going into this, so we'll go into, when I get into implementations, we'll go through a few things and jump into some code. So implementations. SVG can be used in your app as an image, as a background image, in line, as an object, and as a data URI. I'm not going to get too much in the data URI stuff, but you remember uh, taking, making that long URL with all the crazy encryption and everything, the bytecode, all the code for your image. That's kind of the way you could do it. Uh, object, using the object tag, embedding it that way. Inline, you're actually going to put the code in line. You can also bring a file in for that. The background image and as an image, you're going to go to a lot of, if you have to build components, you're going to Google a lot. And you're going to get a lot of the same sites. And you're going to see this, oh, it's a background image. That's cool. No, I'm not building a background image. I'm building an actual component that we need the capabilities to draw different angles or do different things like that. And here's the big issue. You'll see this stuff. You see my file.svg, cool goes in as an image, that's great. When you do that implementation, you can't style it with external style sheets, you cannot get into the innards, you cannot have any interactivity with it. So if you need interactivity and all that stuff, just kind of can that one, just get that out of the way. The background image, very similar, you notice how we're doing the URL, my file, all that, same situations that you'll run into there. So those two, if you have to have interactivity and get in there and style things with external style sheets and stuff, just stay away from the examples that say, this is how to do it you'll go crazy. You'll wonder why you can't get it right, and they seem to get it always right in their tutorial. There's some element types we'll go over, but let's just jump in and look at something along. absolutely goofy and probably not of any value in the real world. But I wanted to build a quick little demo app. I love sneakers. So got a quick uh, SVG out there of sneaker, optimized the code a little bit. And then we said, you know, what if somebody was creating a sneaker, a custom sneakers? So we go over here, use the typical HTML5 stuff, 
you know, hey, cool, check this out. You know, well, we'll make that green, we'll make that. You know, so we'll just go ahead and we'll customize this a little bit here. We'll do the wave. So here we are. So somebody asked you, how many of you have ever ordered customized t-shirts? Remember that, you know, you pick the colors, you pick the, the stripes and all that? Think about it. Get an illustrator, somebody who's really good at tr tracing out those pictures and stuff like that, because you don't want the shaky or jank lines. They go into Illustrator, they make the SVG for you, and I'll just show you, this is ridiculously amounts of tiny code that you'd ever have to write, and it's all native. And that's what I loved about SVG. Trying to do this, there's been other examples. Oh, go get images. I've got images pre-cached, you know what I mean, for making those t-shirts, things like this. Something like this, the SVG is far bigger, the code for the SVG is far bigger than the app itself. So let's look at the code here. Is that too tiny for everybody? A little bit? All right, we're gonna bump this up. How's that? Better? Okay. So let's jump down here. These are all the shapes that you're gonna see. This, all these paths, fill, all these crazy numbers and stuff. That's that sneaker all drawn out. That's what, right between that SVG tag on 188, all the way up to, what do we got, 77? That's an SVG embedded in line. This you don't put into production like this, why? All that white space, comments, you know what I mean? We can optimize that and get that smaller and get it better. But that drew the sneaker for you. Now we went ahead and we colored it, right? We had the interactivity with JavaScript. I had buttons up top, but guess what? I can throw an on-click event on one of these elements too. So you can actually click it, on-click, same thing as like a button would. Here's the JavaScript that we were doing, just changing the fills. It's real simple. JavaScript starts on line 214 and that whole app is done on line 238, okay? There's nothing to this. There's no jQuery, folks. Didn't need jQuery for it. Um, I'm a big proponent of vanilla JavaScript. Uh, do believe that jQuery is needed, so I'm not bashing jQuery, okay? It's needed when you've got legacy systems, big apps. But all we're doing here, document query selector, I picked the color picker, that was just the HTML5 color picker. You want something fancy, you're gonna have to make more. But just think about that, I'm able to make Select a shape, what did I do? I went, I got the element by the ID that was passing off the button, fill opacity, got the value off of what the uh, opacity was, got the value off the color picker, and the SVG changed. The cool part about this is, what I love about SVGs is, we can take this, big, small, it's not pixelized, right? So when you got the people who had to have, they got that giant JavaScript app to have the color in this or that or things like that, this is simple. But how about going out and getting the map of the United States, SVG coordinates, available everywhere, right? You ever had to plot something, show something quick on, not technically on a real map with real lat long situations, but high end stuff like that, you can do very simply. JavaScript right here was tiny. So this app probably took me, it took me about 15 minutes in JavaScript to write it, and it took me about a day and a half to get the SVG right. Because uh, I tried to use one of those tools and trace the lines myself. Then I found an awesome online service that I could upload a file and it would output SVG. So then, of course, um, as my friends know me, I'm always sort of like, well, what can we break next? So one of my favorite movies in the world was uh, Big Trouble in Little China. I love this movie. So my thing was, let's make a movie poster here, right? Let's do this in SVG. Well, that's, yeah, don't do that. Um, because that'll look something like this. Uh, Colors, you got to get all that right, but then you want to take a look at something intense. Um, let's see, let's just view the page source. There you go. And that just keeps going. So understand anything can be abused, but with this stuff, enjoy it. You can have fun, but the scalable part, the interaction of it, the hardest part for me was getting the quality image, getting the outlines for it. So let's talk about that app I mentioned. This is not the full production app by any means. This is just a baby component early on in the stages of development. Have, uh, we had an Angular app, okay? Anybody here working with Angular? All right, anybody here working with D3? Okay, D3 with Angular? All right, you know pain, you know pain, right? Um, the whole idea of, in Angular, it's got its own scope, so you go and you draw things and everybody's like, man, you're gonna use SVG, you gotta go use D3, D3 is awesome. No, so I wanna warn you, D3 has nothing to do with SVG, okay? It'll render, tags on a screen for you. You can just so happen use SVG because you want to do that for bar charts, lines, paths, things like that. It's got features in there, but it's not something that makes your life with SVG any easier. And I'll, and I'll show you why. Um, so this app, it's just real simple. It's hard to see, this. the resolution is horrible. Um, but we've got a situation here, we expand, we collapse. 
Um, here's the downside. This was early on, but you're going to see this redraw itself. I would never want that like that for production, but unfortunately, Angular, we had to destroy the root, recreate, kind of gets crazy. But here you go. I'm just scaling, panning, all this stuff. This is a D3 using that um, with Angular, but it's SVGs. One of the big things we had to do was highlight a node and center it. So now here we go. We got to highlight all the way back to the root where there was a problem, right? I learned an interesting trick here with uh, SVG. SVG is not like anything like HTML. There is no document flow, okay? If you got the idea that I'm going to use Z index to overlay something on top of another piece, stop right there. You'll beat yourself senseless. You'll look, you'll Google, and you'll wonder why there's really no posts about how to use Z index with SVG, because you can't. So I was the idiot who spent half a day looking for that, because I didn't want to have to figure out how to draw over. So then you learn little tricks, like you got a path on top of another path, make the path when they get laid on each other, there's an intersecting point, and one shows over the other, make the other one a little wider. That's how we got the red, a little wider than the gray line, so it looks like it's all the way there. Otherwise, the final answer was to draw a path from that box all the way to the root node, okay, to get over things that are laid in. And we'll show the code for that. So let's jump back into a quick thing here. So we were going to talk about shapes. I'm not one big on slides. I kind of like the worst thing in the world to me is putting together a slide deck. Um, let's talk about testing for SVG. You can do this now if you want. There's a few things I, I read up on, but I'll be honest with you. We're using uh, D3 with the production app and in my personal apps that I make myself. I'm the worst developer out there. If you can't use SVG and I made something in SVG and it's my own personal stuff, sorry. You know what I mean? Upgrade your browser, get Chrome, get something. Um, but when I work for somebody and I'm working for a company, it's not like that. You got to take care of it. Use libraries for fallbacks, things like that. But here's one uh, that's been coming out, looking for type of SVG rec, if it's undefined, what to do, take care of that. SVG image, this is the as an image thing. There's been some talk about this line right here. Um, oh gosh, that's horrible. Um, oh man, it's going to be horrible. Sorry about that, folks. I didn't realize the resolution would be like that. Um, but in here, I'm going to upload all this to GitHub. You can go ahead, take a look at the stuff, have fun with whatever you want. Um, and then there's get attribute and, uh, uh, by namespace, and I put meh on this one because what they're saying is document.create an element, SVG, and then get attribute namespace. Okay? That's cool if you create it with a namespace. So there's a namespace for SVG. You can create elements without namespaces, so I'm not sure how reliable that technique would be work to work for uh, testing for SVG. So that's one aspect there. Um, boy, this is really going to be rough. Um, hmm. So shapes. Let's get down to the basics here. Everybody's seen there's rectangles, there's circles, there's an ellipse, there's a line, there's polylines, polygons. Oh, wow, cool shapes. What's the big deal? All it comes down to, and let's go right over here to shapes. That should look better. Um, for rectangles, real simple things here. Um, when you're working with all this stuff, you can control, and we'll talk about it, there's properties that you can control with CSS and ones you cannot. The ones right now just get over trying to control X, Y, width and height with CSS. Just, just stop, it'll drive you nuts. You'll think it's working, but it's not. Okay, X and Ys are handled in SVG as attributes right there, so you're gonna have to directly hit the nodes to do that stuff. Or you wrap them in an element, I'll show you how we do for the expanding and stuff of a, a G element, which is actually a grouping element, and you can use transform. So your CSS transform is what you're going to do for uh, X and Ys for transform translate. You won't be able to directly affect this in CSS. So there's a rectangle. There's a circle. Interesting thing about a circle is radius 550 at CXCY. If this is on what you probably won't see well on this screen is the, when you do circles and you're trying to wonder why the heck it's over here all the time and halfway off, C, X, C, Y is the X, Y coordinate of its center, and that is going to default 0, 0. Everything in the world in SVG is in this coordinate system, this box. 0, 0. Okay, everything's up there. You have to position all your elements within the SVG canvas. Or you can group them and position groups. So get ready for that, and we'll show. That'll, that'll be another nightmare of moving things around. But it's not that bad once you figure it out. Uh, ellipses, here you go. This is a perfect thing. Translate. We got the 90 to 50. Got RX, RY, rounded corners on those rectangles over here. If you want rounded corners, they've got RX and RY attributes. If you only specify one, the other one's defaults to the same value. So you don't have to specify both, but I encourage you to do so because we don't want people to guess 
what's going on. Just might as well spell it out. So you've got polylines. Again, these points are move to a point, drop at an XY coordinate, go to the next point, go to the next point, and that's how it works. That first setup is get to a point and then start drawing. Polygon, now you'll see paths are just continuations of all this stuff. It's just drawing everything out. So you can do everything with a path that you're seeing here. But don't. Please use a shortcut like a rectangle or a circle or a square. Just use those tags, save time. But you can do everything with these, which, like I said, this is a path for, uh, just give you an idea, here's a path for the sole, the rubber bottom, move to 679.94. See that crazy syntax? You can draw circles, squares, shapes, anything you want using paths. Don't do it if you don't have to. Let's see, we will jump over to, really, okay, so there they are, that's the shapes. You saw kind of the code there. All pretty basic stuff. Some of the big things though, a view box. This is the craziest thing, because I didn't know anything about view box. I didn't know what the heck this meant. Height and width is what I put on all my SVG elements. And height and width, specify 400 by 400. X and Y coordinates, zero, zero in the top left. Everything's cool. This view box concept is a little bit different. Think of uh, SVG Canvas is infinitely scalable. It just goes everywhere, anywhere. The view box is what you can put right on top of it and just kind of move it around. You remember those old, the spotlight over the thing type thing? You can do that. So with view box, understanding how that attribute works on SVG will be important for all of you who need to scale for responsive design, or if you want to make something larger with things off to the side that aren't quite displayed yet and move or pan or have things brought in. So remember, view box, and you can see this box in here. So let's go ahead and uh, massively fail at trying to do a live demo of this. Um, I always have, I'm full of positivity. No, um, let's see, here we go. Let me see, where's my elements? Okay, let's take a look at this. Is that screen still, it's pointless, isn't it? I'm sorry. Let's go look at it in the code editor. Um, so this view box will catch you at time to time if you're not prepared for it. But here's what it, we're looking at. That 1010 that you see right here, that is on the rectangle that was a little offset. So we'll toggle back and forth. I got a, a SVG canvas 400 by 400. I've said the view box XY 400 and 400. What I'm saying is its coordinate systems will be 00, zero at 00, zero in the SVG container. I can shift that. So let me take this and change this and watch it do absolutely nothing because um, this is kind of the way it goes sometimes. So you notice there's this space in there, there's that gap. There it goes. I just basically took the coordinate system of the view area and moved it, okay? So I didn't move the SVG, but I've now changed the coordinates for everything in there. They're gonna be working off the view box's coordinates. So if you ever end up in a situation where somebody's got this going on, and you think you're going to put, oh yeah, zero, zero, you know, this will work. This should work. Watch it. Watch it actually make me look like a fool. Um, there it is. It just keeps moving off. You know what I mean? Now it's like 20 pixels off the other way. So when you're looking at that, you're like, why isn't things lining up? That's a huge catch right there. Check the view box dimensions. See if anybody's messing with those. Um, if we want to do that and get that back to the 10 like this, check this. And this should probably, I hope, work. There, there you go. Okay. So now my coordinates weren't zero, zero anymore. They were to the view box, which the view box has now changed the coordinates of the SVG. So keep that in mind. That's a number one uh, killer for me why things wouldn't line up and everybody was like, nothing's lining up. Everything is off by like five or six or eight pixels. What is it? View box is usually being controlled. Um, it is very valuable though, if you, you just gotta know when you're using it. So element types to keep in mind, um, we've got structural, descriptive, animation, gradient, filters, and shapes. And we'll get it and show a few of those. There's some special tags and attributes to keep in mind. Um, don't repeat yourself, as everybody knows the dry principle. Some interesting things if you're going to use embedded uh, CSS or inline CSS to keep in mind would be this. Let's take a look at this. I have an SVG element here. Inside here, I have a def, uh, definition tags. I have a rectangle, X, Y, height, 50, 20. And now I have this tag called use. See what I'm doing there? And what I'm doing is I'm referencing the ID to what's up here. So I don't have to keep spitting all this stuff out. So it's a great way to like, okay, this is the component. This is a button I made because I need it to be a star. This is the shape. This was always what it's going to be. 
one time in the definition, somebody else can redefine it, and you can come down here, and I, and I use it twice, okay? This one is not doing anything. This one is overriding the orange, giving a fill. I'm gonna show you the screen, and I'm gonna ask if anybody, I had a problem getting height and width to work, even as properties when I put them down here. They weren't working in Chrome. So if I change the height and width, it still kept inheriting the height and width here. It, and when I took that out, then the element wouldn't display. So some quirky things, I'm not sure why or what the situation is, but as a heads up, I ran into that using this. Linear, this is like the gradients right here to, to create a gradient. You want to do that in the def tag so you can reuse it over and over, different things. All this stuff that you're seeing right here, if you were to do it dynamically in JavaScript, basically what you're going to do is you're going to create an SVG element. You're going to go create a def, uh, definition element inside the SVG. Get, what I'm, get where I'm going with this. And even with JavaScript, you're actually going to build this thing out. So like if I were to, let's just jump over to that whiteboard piece that you saw. Every square, every piece that you saw drawn is in this. This is a generator service that we had to do. Line functions, we're drawing lines, SVG counts. Let's see, we've got, yeah, there's the service. This is laying out these little pills that had numbers in it. This is all JavaScript. Set text attribute, by the way, text is another fun thing to fight with. It does not work like paragraphs or text in, in regular HTML markup. You're gonna learn about T-spans. You're gonna learn start, beginning, middle, end, where things line up. Uh, if you say something like text in a little text box, it's 100 pixels and you say, I want it to line up in the, to the aligned middle, what it does is it actually takes the text and shoves it to the zero, zero, or the x, y coordinate of the text element so that it shifts way over there. It doesn't float around. So nothing floats around an SVG, so it can get kind of gnarly. Uh, we had to do some calculations to get some things done there. So this is just a bunch of stuff. All this code you see right here in JavaScript, doing it natively in JavaScript, all, you'll, you probably remember set attribute, all this type of stuff, all that just to do where are we? To draw one of these. Why? D3 is awesome. You can create trees and it will render and give you, you give it data, it will augment your data and tell you X, Y coordinates and lay it out for you. That's a huge value. So if you gotta do tree type structures, D3 is huge there. You pass the data and augments. Thing is, in D3 code, let's take a look at what some of that basic stuff might look like uh, right here. Let's see, this would be, we've got node types, so there was a situation where these shapes could change dynamically depending on data. So we didn't always know the node was, all, if they show you trees, they always got the cool circle, and it always works. What they don't show you is if you've got to change that circle to a diamond or some path, not just another shape, you've got to kind of put some logic in there. SVG does stuff like this, append, and it takes a G, which is a grouping node. This is how, think of a G node as like a div tag. It doesn't have any real display properties. It just allows you to group elements. So if I have these nodes that you saw on the screen, when one of them moves, all the things with it move together, okay? Because you don't nest things inside of a rectangle or anything like that. So you want to do this type of thing. But here it does. It depends a G element, right? That's great. Comes down here. Ah, I did an attribute transform. That's how I get X, Y coordinates, moving things like that there. So I'm changing things. But as you can come down here, I got to append another element. So I'm passing in some data. The problem is, I can't just say an if statement here or write a little function that returns a string that looks like rectangle or circle or things like that. It looks like you would. You actually have got to go create, when doing D3, like this stuff for shapes in certain situations, you have to go back and actually create an actual node element, an actual SVG element in JavaScript as create node with namespace, all that, and return that to be passed on. So every time you see this rendering, you have a bunch of native JavaScript, but to get these different shapes based on data, it had to go in, D3, cool, I know where to lay you out. Wait, what shape do you want? Um, okay, use regular JavaScript, call function. I gotta return an actual node. So the markup, let's see what this, let's take a look at this. Is this gonna, yeah, this is gonna, um, all right, we're gonna jack this thing up, come on. All right, just to give you an idea, and when I'm natively rendering that, that SVG there, like anything else with JavaScript, let's see. Uh, get better with your tools. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah, it's all in the script tag. There we go. Oh, wonderful. Here we go. Whiteboard, SVG. Hey, looks simple. 
It's all rendering. This is a graphic tag. See what I've got there? Inside it, it's got a path because it drew a circle or drew a diamond. All those coordinates are there. Then there's continues on. These are all the paths, actually. What, what they did is laid down, excuse me, on this first G element, all those lines you see connecting the trees, those are paths laid out. They lay it down first, then you put the nodes on top. Okay? If you lay down and when a node renders the first one that gets rendered, everything gets stacked on top of it. So if there's any intersection points, it's always behind what comes after it. So that's what we mean by no flow on that. But let's see, come up here. This would be an uh, interaction point, one of those points. It's a shape. It's got a path in it because this one's a diamond. This is the text stuff to get the decision point labeled. Text anchor middle, we're using M's there. But you see we're doing it right on the XY's right there. We're doing that with JavaScript. So just keep in mind when somebody says, oh yeah, man, D3 is going to be your SVG savior, things like that. No, no, it's, it's a great selector, query selector engine. It's great at calculating things, giving you where lines should go, tree components like that. You're still going to be writing SVG. And, and like I said, this presentation was more of an accident because of the struggles I went through. So we went through the shapes, property flows. Remember these key things. You can't set height, width, positions, and CSS with your SVG. So don't, don't keep trying to. You can use transforms. You can use the transform to handle things. But actually setting attributes, no, you want to do that in the groups. Um, styling attributes, you can check them out. There's the whole thing there at the links there. There's no document flow as there is in HTML. There's no such thing as floating something over or something else bumping it. Everything's positioned in SVG when you're building interfaces. No Z index. That's right. If you rendered something first and there's stuff overlapping it, heh, guess what? You're going to have to re-render it on top or wait to when to render it and when to put it in. So remember, your stacking order of the way things come down, you are, how it's rendered is how it's stacked. You cannot change it like you can with Z index in HTML. Um, presentation attributes. Okay, these are when you saw the fill tag. We'll go right here. Um, let's see, this is not a, uh, yeah. So look at this uh, CSS for a second. Presentation attributes, fill. Fill color, you know, things like fill dash color, all those attributes and stuff like that. Those are presentation attributes. They override user agent always. But even though you see the, the tag right there on the attribute that says yellow or red, CSS right here that you see embedded in a, def set, in a def, yeah, definition tag, this will override it every time. So let me see. There we go. So one of the things about your CSS is understanding the inheritance when using it with these presentation tags. That'll kill you too. You're like, I cannot change the color of this darn node, and I've had it changed on the line, in line. It's the cascade order. CSS will come in, stomp right over everything like that. So it goes, first thing applied is a user agent style. Next thing applied is SVG's presentation attributes. Then after that, it's style sheets, inline style sheets, and so forth and so on. So just remember, those presentation attributes are really small on the food chain. They get gobbled up quickly. Um, so you can do style sheets by having a regular CSS file that you reference and use it with classes like you saw in the app that I had there. Or you can embed them. So this is how you'd embed for object and things like that to handle that. You can see right there, it's the rectangle. Fill, stroke, stroke width. One thing I would like to encourage people, and I know that there's hardcore CSS people would say, don't do it. But uh, here, I'll show you. You can get mad at me. It's all good. Um, the reason I say this is you never know who's going to work on your code when you're done, when you're gone, or if you're not around. And the last thing you want is somebody to say, yeah, I'm just going to start moving things around here and uh, all that. So what I do, and I know it makes no sense, but bear with me. See this SVG headline, SV, an ID with a pre-qualifier? I mean, come on, rookie move, right? An ID is an ID. You don't need to put anything else around it. That's what it goes to. Bear with me here. I, use, I just put the SVG in front of those on all my styles that actually focus on SVG so that the next person coming through goes, oh, that's for SVG. I either know about it or I don't, which means they don't run in and say, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this thing. This makes no sense. That's not part of you know, CSS that I know of. That's what we want to make sure doesn't happen. So it's just kind of a workflow tip. Let's see. Um, let's see. Animations, things to keep in mind. I'll quickly show the SVG. I don't know how it'll work with the screen, but um, Smile or SML, synchronized multimedia integration language was how they wanted to do all the animation stuff with SVG. It's not ever been supported in IE, and Chrome's no longer going to support it. Save your time. Don't even bother with it. The minute you see an example using that, just kind of move on. If you're going to do heavy animations with uh, SVG, 
just go, I hate to say it because I'm not a big go get a library person, but go get snap SVG or svg.js. Just those will help you out a lot. Um, CSS animations works on shared properties. So that means if there's a shared property, let's say, um, well, color you can't, nope, color's not a shared property. So you can't really do anything there. Uh, opacity is, right? You can make things, change that. You can work that. Um, few of the things, anything that's shared between regular CSS and, and applies to SVG, you can use transform and animations with those. If it doesn't, you're not doing much with XYs, you can't do words on paths, things like that. That's why you want the libraries. Um, SVG is an image and background image. If you're gonna put animations in that and that's how you're gonna do it, you gotta embed those animations with the animation tags. They have tags that structure out all the animation. I mean, it's XML, so there's a tag for everything. Um, you can use object like an image, but it, you've gotta include its CSS interactions. So here's an interesting thing. Hovers won't happen when you use your SVG as an image or a background image. They will in an object. Um, the best way though, if you've gotta go in line with something, write it in line in there and you got full interactivity with it and you can do it. But remember, start with a giant file size, you're gonna have bloat. So get that narrowed down. If you're doing it dynamically, that's the way you're gonna to wanna to do it anyway. Um, let's see, other pitfalls. Presentation attributes, we already talked about that. Um, node disappears when using filters. Like I said earlier, it's a fun one. Put a drop shadow on something, watch it work great in two browsers and the third one, the node just doesn't appear. So when you're working with SVG and you've applied a gradient, a filter, any of that stuff, and all of a sudden something disappears from your screen, I'll save you a ton of time. It's what you just added is the filter. Okay, the filter, the gradient, it's right there. That's the problem. How it's using, either using the URL, is the browser okay with that? So when stuff starts disappearing from your screen randomly and you're using all those filters and, and uh, those type of things, that's where it is. That's where it's usually always gonna be. It's not gonna be in how you wrote the node element or anything like that. Um, CSS transform origin, this is kind of a funny one. Um, it works almost identical to HTML, but when you start moving things, if I rotate a box um, in CSS, HTML, 45 degrees, it just turns in the screen, right? I won't be able to, it's not gonna render well, so I'm not gonna show it here, but it just turns 45 degrees, right? In uh, SVG, when I do something like that, let's see. Uh, let's see. That was the view box. That's what it'll do. Why is it doing that? Because it's going off the coordinates of its X00 up in those corners. So if you're gonna rotate something in SVG, you're going to also have to handle the transform, the XY for it as well. So it's, it's going to move off its pivot point, okay? Circles, that's where if you've ever seen those loaders people do with SVG and all of a sudden you're doing one and you change the XY because you wanted to move a little bit and all of a sudden it jerks off the screen and kind of reappears. That's why it's using a different coordinate system than you think. So if you're changing, rotating anything, rotations mainly, you've got to change the transforms on your SVG elements. Otherwise, they don't, they don't rotate in place like they do in HTML. Because there is no concept in SVG of a block level element. It does not exist. Um, so Kix Creator you saw, I'm hoping the screen here will work with me. Snap SVG. Um, this is pretty cool. There's some stuff here for their animation. I don't know anything about coffee, but I learned something. I clicked Mocha, and all SVG, it rotates around, fills out another pie chart. Ah, it's got milk in it. A macchiato, what's that got? Ah, all right, more, yeah, there we go. An espresso, as you can see, everything's changing. The little dial was moving and all that. It's, people are like, yeah, that's cute, but I build enterprise apps. Trust me, when you get to a point where there's a complex workflow, or something you have to create that's just kind of has to be mapped out or drawn or, or visualized differently than a list of stuff, SVGs are actually a good way to look at get, accomplishing things that you might have to spend forever trying to do, uh, hacking away with CSS, trying to make, I'm gonna only put two borders on a box and make that look like a line, no, don't do it. Um, this is a cool one, I don't know how this will show up here. Oh, my phone is no longer giving me, a, uh, I was using my phone as a hotspot, oh well. So snap.svg library, highly recommend it anytime you gotta start animating things. D3, if you've gotta build a tree or you gotta build anything out like that and you wanna keep a lot of things uh, when data's changing and stuff like that, D3 is really good. That why it's good at graphs and charts is because it will bind to the data for you 
and it will do your transforms and things like that. But you're still going to be writing the SVGs. You're still going to have to have knowledge in your mind about what SVG is really doing because it's not going to just magically do something for you. Um, from that point on, when I got done doing the project, the, it's launching next week. It is in there. It was a nightmare. I'm smiling. And all those other people are the ones that are probably going to have to support it. Um, I love them dearly. I've got great coworkers. Uh, you're welcome. Um, but I, I will say this. Do not shy away from SVG. Uh, I didn't realize how, I guess you could say, after all these years of being in the front end development since 98, 99, actually how crippled I was with not knowing how to use that tool and finding out being a JavaScript junkie. It's just as easy to do it that way with a library. But now I have like no problem saying if you want to make something crazy on an interface, we can do it. I don't have to sit here and figure out how am I going to do this with a bunch of div tags and some CSS. So if anybody has any questions, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 3D transformations don't uh, with SVG yeah. don't hit the GPU yet, okay. from what I've seen. I could be also old data that I'd read too. Mm -hmm. So that's the only th that's the so one thing. I stuff yes. Okay. Yeah. And I could possibly depends what I'd read at what time. You know what I mean? That's I, I'll admit I am not your SVG expert. I'm just relating a story and some things that I ran into to hope they help out. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. Yes. I would totally hack it that way. And when I say hack it that way, that's not an insult. It's they have a thing, a concept called foreign object, and you can read about that. Foreign object's not that well supported in a lot of the browsers. And everything that I've seen, as long as you understand when you're positioning your HTML element, that all of a sudden your coordinate system is different within the SVG thing. Uh, one of my first attempts with trying to build that whole thing was to say, all right, D3, let's just rock the lines out for me. I don't want to have to worry about it. And I'm going to make uh, little divs with all the text, everything, and just lay them everywhere. Where it became a nightmare, though, was when those things would expand or collapse. You're losing track of things. Too much to work on. Um, yeah, you, you, can, you can totally do the overlay on that. But now you're going to have to think in two coordinate systems. And when you, something moves in the SVG, remember, there's timing issues, too. If this was to move with it, OK, this runs, and then the event, the event loop's going to JavaScript. Wait, oh, you got to run. You know what I mean? Now I got some things. They're not going to run together sometimes. You can get some janky stuff. So but if it's like a static? Floating if it's just static like that, and it doesn't move or have to do anything like that, absolutely. Why not? It gets the job done. And uh, I mean, that's what we got to do. So yeah, I would, I would do that. I would prefer to see, I would always prefer to do that than you try and attempt to get those foreign object things to work in some of the other ways. It's just I don't, I can't spend that much time worrying about every single browser anymore. So I am. Yeah. So so now remember, though, there's a problem with, H, with DOM elements, right? If you change the opacity on something uh, in a DOM element, all its children's get it. You know what I mean? So if you have something wrapping the SVG, I've never done that, so I don't know. But I would think it could possibly, if it's wrapped around there and you change the opacity outside the SVG, could do something there. But as far as within there, you can overlay. You're not going to, the HTML will never be interacting with the SVG. They'll be on their own worlds. But when you overlay things on, uh, so if you don't want all the children of something to get an opacity, you just want certain things to have different depths to it. Um, don't apply those styles to the graphic element or the G element, which is the container. You want to pass it right directly into what you want or group them because anything you apply will inherit that way. And, I, and I, that was a nightmare fight I had with a couple of things. Thanks a lot, and I hope you join uh, tomorrow, flying drones with JavaScript. Um, duck? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks a lot.